Hello, this is Javier Anzueta with Javi's Woodshop. For those of you who have been following along with my RV updates, here is a summary of all the stuff I've been doing to the RV. I hope you enjoy it. In February of 2015, my cousins from Central Florida asked me if I and my family would like to join them RV camping in Northern Florida at the end of the year. Well, not owning an RV, I immediately agreed, figuring somehow one would appear out of thin air. While pricing RVs, uh, new and uh, used and looking at some rental options, I got sticker shock. So I did what any person would do. I asked a buddy of mine, who happens to be a carny, if he knows of any used ones for sale. I was not at all surprised when he said, Sure, I happen to have this great deal for you. Now let me give you some background. I have a couple of locations at uh, Theme Park in Miami. So while part of the year I'm in a suit and having cocktails with small to medium business owners and captains of industry, I am also in constant contact with the most colorful and interesting people to grace this earth. I know this particular friend for the better part of a decade and one can describe him as looking like Larry the Cable Guy, except with a Texas drawl so intense that only I and a dozen others can understand him when he's excited. While he may look like Larry the Cable Guy, his character and negotiating skills rival those of Mr. Haney of Green Acres. If he says it's worth a thousand bucks, he'll sell it to you for a hundred, and you can rest assured that in true entrepreneurial spirit, you will have something worth between $1,000 and something you actually have to pay to haul away. But don't worry, my friend will be there ready to charge you in case you do need to haul it away. So when he tells me, I got this 28-foot fully furnished camper. I've got it for you, and I'm willing to let it go for $1,000. It even has a slide out. I said, Okay, sure, what's the catch? It's not here at the moment, he says. Long story short, I took a road trip, brought the trailer down from uh, up north, and the family and I now own an RV. I pull into Miami. My wife was at her best friend's house. So I stopped by on the way home to show her our new vacation home. Her friend enters the RV first, looks around, has this strange look on her face that I've never seen before goes outside and warns my wife don't come in here unless you have the divorce papers ready okay I'm exaggerating a little bit but she was warned luckily for me my wife knows potential if not she never would have married me and uh, she also knows what I'm capable of when I have my heart set on something here are some photos of my beautiful furnish, fully furnished RV on the first day. The date was October 10th, 2015, and now I have two months to make this livable before our reserve trip up north. Luckily for me, the roof and the trailer frame was intact. Now all I had to do was recreate everything else in between. First thing I did was gut the entire shell of the trailer. I removed the wall panels, floors, removed what little furniture there was, and basically gutted the entire RV. At this point, all that was left were four aluminum exterior walls held together by a wood frame. The ceiling was untouched. I commenced repairs on sections of the wood wall that were rotted. The next step was the floor itself. The original floor was a hodgepodge of different sized plywood, hardwood, and pressed wafer board pieces of varying thickness. Parts of the floor were so springy that I was afraid of falling through. Now, being that there was a slide out involved, it had to be removed in order to replace the main floor. So, since the floor of the slide out was 50% rotted anyway, removing it was quite simple. Putting it together, on the other hand, was a completely different story. I beefed up the floor joists, lined them with insulation, and proceeded to screw down a new marine plywood floor. The trailer is semi-divided into three main sections. The master bedroom in the front, the main section in the middle, and the rear area for the bathroom. 
I purchased a 28-foot roll of wood grain linoleum and glued it down bow to stern. The next step was the slide out. The slide out is a 12 by 4 foot section and it's basically an open-ended box with one side attached to a beam. The mechanical slide, if you will. And the other side rests on the main floor of the trailer. After building up a 12 foot by 4 foot by 1 inch thick marine plywood floor by laminating half inch plywood sheets together, I propped up the slide on stilts, slid the floor in underneath, bolted it to the slide, to the walls, and uh, at at attached it all together. The next step was stapling the paneling to the studs. I cut the panels to fit and installed them. I routed the window openings and installed the original windows back with the proper sealants in order to avoid what had clearly, clearly been a problem in the past. I used plastic edge banding to dress the seams between the panels inside. And since I like the original interior pattern, and I am a painting contractor, I decided to do a nice four color faux finish to simulate the original wallpaper. Here's the wallpaper and the faux finish side by side. That completes the interior shell of the RV as well as this section of the video. In part two I'll show you all the custom furniture I did for the interior, the bathroom construction and a few other mods that I did on the RV. Please continue to part two. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.